Hey, Brambro back with some Grand Tactician Civil War. Our newly started CSA campaign in the 1.06, which is now live, and it's been live uh, out of beta for several days now. Right, in the last episode, the first episode, uh, went through and talked quite a while about finances, policies, the plan for those, projects, um, <clears throat> and uh, a few kind of initial plans uh, in uh, the Virginia area. And then at the end of the campaign, still needed to do things like army reorganization and uh, some stuff with officers and did that off camera. And I've done those things. Um, so, before I talk about those, though, there was a question on the last episode about, uh, I think the question was, why aren't you doing industrialization? And the short answer to that is I am doing industrialization. I have every intention of uh, hammering these uh, industrialization policies along this line. And even took the starter southern industrialization starter policy so that we could go past industry two and do industry three and maybe even industry four. I simply didn't take industry first. Um, took military as we discussed and kind of the the broad brush idea there is why do we do industry to improve the economy to support the army. Well, right now, we have a surplus. Our economy is fine, right? This is the peacetime economy. I don't need to improve the economy unless I need to support an army. So first we need an army, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, it's a cart before the horse thing. We need an army, and we need it now. And we need a much, much, much bigger army than we have. And that's why I'm doing uh, military and manpower things as a priority right out of the gate. Uh, need to establish that army first. Then we need to sustain it. And that's where the economy comes in and the agriculture and the government funding and the industrialization. So I hope that makes sense and answers that question. Okay, <clears throat> so I did a lot of stuff off camera uh, that I'm going to talk about, but the short version is uh, I've organized the armies. They have divisions now. I've taken my few good weapons and farmed them out. Uh, that didn't last very long. There wasn't much to farm out to the various units. Uh, I have kind of organized the naval squadrons. I have done some naval construction. I have uh, put a bunch of political officers in command of forts, and I have promoted a bunch of officers in the unassigned manpower pool here. I have ordered a few, we well, I've ordered one. I've ordered some weapons in the weapons panel looking ahead. I've placed a few buildings, I have upgraded some buildings, and I have a plan for other buildings. And I'm willing to bet that this Army of Northeastern Virginia sitting in Washington is probably going to start making a beeline for this North Virginia Army. And I bet we're going to have a battle real soon, and for that reason... I'm just going to tell... Joe Johnston to start moving. Get over here and reinforce. I'm going to bring him about to here so that he can head back to Winchester if necessary. But let's get him on this side of the Blue Ridge. So let's make that order. Um. <clears throat> talked about it earlier going over the army reorg but 
So what we're doing here is West Virginia Army is going to march right up here to Grafton. McClellan's Army of Occupation is almost certainly there. And there will be a battle initiated. I am going to deliberately retreat from that battle and give the Union a victory. Because this is in Virginia, this is Confederate territory. The town is Union occupied, right? So on the front lines, okay, so that's Union territory occupied, but it's in Virginia. This is Confederate state. That is going to give the Union their objective of win a victory on Confederate soil. When that happens, Union national morale stops dropping. Until they get that victory, Union national morale just drops and drops and drops. And for purposes of having uh, a decent length campaign, we want that to stop. Well, I don't know what you guys want. I want that to stop <laughs> uh, as early as possible. That's why I'm giving them this victory at Grafton. With it in such a way that it doesn't really hurt us. You know, not actually going to fight a battle and take losses or anything. And uh, I, I intend to let the Union have West Virginia. Whether the AI actually takes West Virginia, that's a different question. But because we put it on historic behavior. I think he probably will. Okay, we're going to do this with that army. Um, Sidney Johnson, he's just waiting for his Florida brigades to show up, so he's going to sit here for now and kind of the same thing with uh, Sterling Price. Somewhere up here is a is another Union army under Nathaniel Lyon. It's about five thousand men. I don't remember if it's at Springfield or at uh, Lebanon or maybe even Rolla. I think it's at Springfield. He's going to want to fight. And I think when that occurs, I don't, and I don't intend to give him that fight. Meaning, I, meaning I do not intend to let him win. We're going to do that in Western Virginia, and I, I don't really care too much about Missouri at this point. This is essentially a defensive army to keep the Union out of Arkansas at this stage of the campaign. Later, maybe not, but for now, that's what we're doing. That's what I'm doing. So if there's going to be a battle in this area, I want it to be in Arkansas, not in Missouri, for morale purposes, right? If we fight in Missouri, we have a fighting spirit penalty for fighting in enemy territory. If we fight in Arkansas, it's the reverse. The Union will have that penalty. Our guys will be defending Confederate soil. So, I'm going to bring the Missouri Army down into Arkansas. Matter of fact, I'm going to bring them down far enough that he's drawing from this supply depot. I don't want to have to build another one. So I'm going to bring Sterling Price down to Fort Smith. Which is pretty passive, I know, but I'm not going to go grab Missouri real early.
in this theater as soon as Johnson gets his uh, brigades and he gets up to I think he needs to be at yellow yellow readiness I am going to march this army straight to Louisville because right now there is not a Union force between Western Virginia at Grafton and Nathaniel Lyon at Springfield, Missouri. There are no Union forces in here. If we just march straight up to Louisville, I believe Kentucky will secede and join the Confederacy. The requirements for that to happen are A, take Louisville, and B, defeat all Union armies in the state. Well, if you take Louisville and no Union armies have even formed to enter the state, boom, secession. Because you meet the second requirement by default. So in that sense, it'll be like what I've done before. I saw that in the last campaign. Um... But I'm not I'm not going to completely take all of Kentucky and insist on getting control of the Ohio River the way I've done in the past. And that is partially because of I'm letting them have West Virginia. This is going to be a Union state. So the rationale of why I wanted the Ohio River in the past. I don't need that as much. The main reason I want Kentucky to be Confederate is so that any fighting we do in Kentucky while, you know, defending Tennessee will be on Confederate territory. That's what I'm really after there. So we are going to go up and grab Louisville if we can. And then... I don't really care if I keep Louisville. Once it flips, once it secedes, it stays a Confederate state. It might get completely occupied by the Union again, and its state support may suck, but it's still a Confederate state. In any battle we fight there, we're going to have that fighting spirit advantage over the uh, Union opponent. So what I'm really doing is creating a nice combat buffer in Kentucky. For purposes of defending Tennessee. Right. Oh my god, he actually clicked the play button. And here comes McDowell right up. Nope, he's getting on the river. Where you going, McDowell? Oh, they want Win they're going to go take Winchester, I think. Yeah. Well. Okay. So he's combining his armies in the Shenandoah. do the same. I don't know what Patterson's doing there. But it works for us because Patterson just took himself out of reinforcement range. So we're going to fight the first battle of the war right here at Winchester. Okay, meeting engagement. It says we're on the Winchester map, and neither side holds the objective, which is Greenwood Heights. Okay, so we're starting down here. 
the north, yeah. There's there's the entry point on the Martinsburg Turnpike. Does he have an entry point over here? No. Does he have any other entry points over here? No. Okay. So this is where he has to start, right around in this area, right? Well, he's going to head for the objective. The question is, there's not really a good road route for him to go straight to it. There really isn't for us either, for that matter. So is he going to march across country through here? Or is he going to take the road into Winchester and then come out this road? I don't know. Because that then begs the question, do we march up into Winchester and then over, or do we go straight across? I kind of expected to spot Federals along here, not over here. And they're marching this way, toward the left. Okay. I think he's crossing here, but then, then to turn back toward the objective. Let's tell Lomax to uh, halt. Okay, so there's the lead federal elements showing up at the objective now. So what we're going to do... Don't want to engage yet. We need to get Beauregard's army over here. We want everyone on this side of Abraham Creek. I don't want guys crossing the creek in combat. So let's get uh, let's get Johnston over here. Beauregard over here. I don't think there's going to be any major combat today. We only have two hours until dark. And uh, our position is pretty much fine, but we'll be able to redeploy a little bit overnight. I'm going to put a few skirms out just to push our uh, just to push our redeployment zone overnight out a little bit. Same thing over on this side. Hills Division. Uh, 
I'm taking some counter battery. Well, I can counter battery back. How about that? It's just I'm being a little cavalier there I didn't realize we were having that big a problem oh yeah Pendleton you yeah, broken full loss resilience e I was not paying attention some pretty strong counter battery there from the Federals Now that Rosser and uh, Walker are up, maybe we can return the favor. Yeah, Rosser's got 12 pound fill guns. Here. Get uh, early. Send your guys over to <laughs> man up those guns. Pendleton's going to get defamed for that. Crap. Nelson's about to break as well. Limber up. Retreat. Come on back. Man, that AI counter battery is pretty fierce. I don't think we've had the same effect on him. route was enough to push us to yeah to minor defeat if nothing else changes well this evening of the first day is not really going all that hot for us is it he holds the objective he's routed one of our battalions looks like he's you know he's winning the counter battery uh, artillery duel here Anybody else taking artillery fire? I don't think so.
Early's detachment driven back. Man, that, that is not going well. Not a good artillery duel for us. All right, we're in the deployment phase overnight. I want these skirmishers out of the way. And I want these guys in front of the artillery. And give them a clear field of fire. Okay. Nope, oh, they moved. Hold on. Okay. Shit. Well, if I'd known you were going to do that, I would have deployed different. <laughs> Okay, so we need to get Beauregard uh, kind of reoriented toward his left. this. We're not in a great position to do so at the moment though. Now let's get uh, AP Hill's division along this fence and push those skirms up. So AP Hill's division is going to get on this fence, and the skirmishers will be here, and they'll be engaging frontally, and this will kind of form a little screen here. And then behind them, we're going to march uh, Longstreet's division, consisting of uh, Pickett, McLaws, and Theophilus Holmes. We'll bring them back over this way, and then they'll push up onto this fence position. I think that's how I'm going to do that. Now I don't need to go that far.
Whoa, 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 what are you doing? Evans, cut that shit out. Oh, I had him selected. I thought I was telling the skirmisher to do that. Oops. Bonham's attachment is what I wanted firing at that uh, artillery over there. So far, the AI is kind of doing a nice job there. You know, we're kind of set up to engage and uh, attack his uh, left flank. He reoriented his position. Marching again to kind of load up on one flank. He's reorienting his position, maintaining fairly decent order. I mean, his cohesion and organization, you know, his positioning doesn't really appear any worse than ours. Left Richardson here is kind of uh, a rear guard of that, uh, yeah. Okay, let's advance Long Street up. Evans is doing all right. It's not a very big brigade. What is this? Well, apparently they're okay, apparently they came at campaign start as a Zwab outfit. Maybe that's why their uniforms are looking a little goofy. Guns are just getting wrecked.
These scrims have done their job. Kind of screening the advance of uh, Longstreet's brigades. Still those scrims to come in. Tell Yule to come up right behind. Um, yeah. Advance picket up onto that fence for cover. I want to advance home up onto that fence for cover. going to do until this engagement is done. Okay. and rotate back and shoot. You know what? I don't know why that artillery got wrecked so bad. I mean, I understand small guns, first combat, but... It's 
Shouldn't the same be true for the Union artillery? They are probably sitting there with six-pound field guns, too. Okay, Richardson is wavering. Now they're getting fence credit now. Jackson up into this brigade. To smooth boards, it's going to have to get pretty close.
and making a advance kind of against Howard, and then these guys come in to flank, and now Bartos in kind of a precarious position. Several brigades back here in the woods. This really isn't something good for uh, Longstreet to push into unsupported. You defeat these guys here in front first. Germs over here to help out. These are all smooth bore brigades over here. These are awful close. Right, hopefully the cab has, uh, or the yeah, no. <laughs> They're out. <laughs> on the other unit. back out. We'll just keep taking fire without shooting back. At least here he's shooting back. I think he's getting the worst of it though. Come on, 
Casey Johnson not doing much better here. Although th this brigade is, is getting pretty wrecked. back uh, Allegheny Johnson. Out. Start moving hill forward. Still got plenty of ammo. Pulling skirmishers in. Okay. Bring Yule up. Bring Yule up on Hill's right.
tight. 10% to 9%. Federals are hanging pretty tough in here. Well, these guys are getting toasty. In fact, let's try to get uh, bees guys kind of in front of them a little bit. Sort of. Move bees. by that house line of sight. That's what it looks like. Okay, the bottom's doing pretty good here. And Evans is doing alright. He's getting a little low on ammo, but here's the brakes. advancing on the left. Okay, starting to see a little bit of gap in the casualty ratio now. It's basically one and a half to one. It's still pretty close.
Jax, these guys can really do anything else. Let's go ahead and push Yule up in here. Doing, bottom's doing fine, casualty wise. These guys in here. Take it's taking losses. Holmes. The boss has been unengaged so far. Go ahead and get the claws up and let's get, take it back a little bit. These guys are taking 50% losses, they're not wavering yet. Okay, Jubal early. In. Evans is about out of ammo. I'm not far behind. Where are you getting cover from? Oh, there's a fence in there. Well, because I've swapped positions on these brigades, have to move them one at a time now, otherwise they'll start the crisscross thing. That brigade forever to break. Okay. I 
Here comes first brigade. But David Jones is going to be engaging him. Be in reserve. We're going to push Coke ahead of him. Early's still in good enough shape that he can be a decent reserve behind Coke. Okay, meanwhile, Jones is protecting the flank against 1st Brigade, supported by Bonham from Longstreet's, uh, not Longstreet, Beauregard. Goes on. Fifty-five hundred, thirty-eight hundred, seventeen percent to thirteen percent. Blank. Come on, Coke. You're killing me, bro. This is too tight to afford a route. And once they get into something, there's not much you can do. You just have to let them complete it and hope for the best. Try it, start your time trying to stop it or order something else to mitigate and it just compounds the problem. Okay. Bottom is still sending rounds down range. Doing, he's doing kind of okay. All right. Coke is engaged, but because he showed his flank and took casualties, now they're nervous. Rally. Okay, you Let's see if you get shot here. Rally. <laughs> Let's just pull them back before they route. Are, are they? No, no wonder. They're facing backwards. Oh, goodness. B's been wounded. Coke's routed. Okay, it's back on you, Jubal. position that we want Longstreet advancing into. It's pretty tight. I don't know who's going to retreat first. I really don't. Let's bring Donaldson over here. got to move up. He can't stand there. He's outranged. He's got to move up with him. We got to get two brigades of fire on this guy. We have two brigades of fire on this guy. Jones isn't doing great, but he's doing as well as anybody else. 
Okay. I need the wall is firing. getting cover from? Is he getting credit for a little bit of forest over here? Seven thousand fifty two hundred twenty point seven seventeen point nine. Just a couple of routes, and this could, this would go lopsided on us real quick. Coax route right here by facing backwards, man, that that made an enormous difference. We need this guy to break right here. says major victory but we're right on the ragged edge and actually this little bar is kind of going in the wrong direction oh that's close got unengaged brigades back here. Yeah, it's turned
running turtle. Well, then it just went all the way. I don't understand what's happening now. I really don't. Whew! Not gonna lie, I got out of that by the skin of our teeth. And we could, I think we're assured of the win. I don't, I do not think we are at all assured of the major. To the point that uh, I am just gonna back everybody out. Yeah, Jones broke. Okay. Early breaking. Donaldson, I don't know how he's not wavering. Donaldson broke. And guess what? They may be, quote, retreating, unquote, but all these units in here, yeah, they didn't they didn't get that memo. <laughs> Did not get the word. Yeah, we flipped a minor. Not gonna lie, I am tickled to death to get out of this with a minor. Early broke. Retreat phase. Who's retreating here?
to the bat. Is that a fence? Advancing? No. <laughs> Pendleton withdraws artillery. He actually broke yesterday, I thought. Within one percentage point. No, 1.3, but I can't remember the last time I had we had uh, casualties this close in a battle. 8,000 to 6,500. Yeah, down at the bottom. Both sides, severe losses. Further casualties can easily break one faction. That's yeah, so what I'm trying to avoid by backing out. Purportedly his retreat phase, but doesn't feel that way to me. artillery is all still good. We're still taking casualties. Lay down. Oh, that's code. He's kind of wavering now. He didn't completely leave the field. Okay, well, in this, quote, victory, unquote, we lost 6,500 men. We lost 33 out of our 52 guns. We definitely came out on the wrong end of the uh, artillery duel. Did lose 8,000 men. No prisoners either side. Well, interestingly, even though obviously our artillery got wrecked, Are already actually inflicted more casualties than theirs did. That's what it looks like. It can't be right, can it? Oh, no, I was reading that backwards. They did take more losses in artillery. That doesn't mean that our artillery did it to them.
Yeah, and that 8,000 was an estimate. This is going to be a little bit more accurate. It's only a thousand different, 75 to 6,500. And looks like they captured 19 guns and we captured zero. Wow. A lot of victory, you know, more victories like that is a good way to lose a war. Okay, AP Hill, Fame, nice. Well, I guess we did capture some guns. We captured uh, almost 4,700 small arms and 10 artillery. Right here. Yeah, and although he had to total a higher casualties, we actually had slightly more, almost a hundred more men actually killed. And 1,200 missing, most of whom are, maybe all of whom, these, may all, these guys may all be captured. Wow. Okay, well. That was a pretty tough battle. And admittedly, that I didn't play that all that terribly well. Uh, they had a lot of cover from forest. And we were advancing over open ground. It seems pretty clear that there were several cases, at least, where our guys were outranged with the smoothbore muskets. So... Um, You know, apparently he's got more rifles deployed with his troops there than uh, than we did. Uh, the rifles we had, I mean, it was the two brigades in the middle, uh, an AP Hills division that uh, you know, Mississippi rifles, and they did a lot of work. I should have I, I should have looked in the HQ reports to see how those two specific brigades did. I think there's a way to look at that. Yeah, Bonham inflicted 1650 to 114. So uh, about a six, 16 to 1 casualty ratio for this brigade. Bonham probably saved the day there. <laughs> it, it makes sense that Hill was the guy who got fame because I think that kind of goes off of a casualty ratio within their command. Uh, Evans not quite as good. 157 casualties and inflicted f almost 500. I didn't know until very recently that this history thing would show their uh, casualties. So Bonham did well. Is it due for the division? Apparently. Well, how come A.P. Hill doesn't get an entry for having led his his division into battle? Does it even show his personal history? Well, I guess, oh, here it does. Yeah, okay. 
All right. Well, that was quite a first battle. And I think that that will bring an end to this episode. If you like what we're doing with the channel, you like the content, then leave a like, leave a comment, maybe even subscribe. But at any rate, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it.